Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're going to be discussing the Miami Dolphins and how they've played so far this season. Before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. Also, if you don't know already, I've been writing some articles for theupdog.com, which is basically a sports article website that goes over a ton of different uh, sports topics. And if you're under 21, you can write for theupdog.com. If you're interested in writing for theupdog.com, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. And if you're interested in reading some of the articles up there, that will also be available in the description down below. Now, let's dive into the video, and I hope you enjoy. So let's hop right into today's video. We're going to be talking about the Miami Dolphins and how they've played so far this season. So let's just go over their big stats so far. Right now, they're 29th in total offense per game, 26th in passing offense per game, 30th in yards per game, but they are 13th in points per game. A lot of that comes from their defense being really opportunistic and helping them score some points as well as some special teams points too. Now though, let's turn it over to the defensive side of the football. They're 21st in total defense per game, 20th in passing defense per game, 27th in run defense, 4th in points per game allowed. Those are the defensive stats. Something that I've heard a lot about the Miami Dolphins defense and something that I've seen from them is that they are a bend but not break kind of defense. This defense gives up a lot of yards um, on the ground, especially, but also through the air. But they don't allow offenses to really take advantage and score a lot, right? They're good at causing turnovers. They've got some big turnover guys that we'll get to in a second. Um, and they've also got some opportunistic sack guys, too, that we'll also get to in a second. Also, the reason that the Dolphins are currently 6-4 and four is that they're 6th in turnover differential, and they're outscoring teams by 6 points, which is about a touchdown. Also, if you look at how they've been playing over the past few games, um, you can see that they've had some defensive touchdowns that I've referenced just before, so maybe some of that is helping them win some games. In fact, it is helping them win some games. Now, though, let's just talk about their schedule. Um, they started the season off kind of rough, right? Started 1-3, and three, only beat the Jags, and they just had a rough start, right? Um, their offense didn't look too great. Defense looked a little sloppy, um, but they were in games. Um, they lost to New England by 10. That was a rough uh, start to the year, but they only lost to Buffalo by three. That was a close game. Obviously, they beat Jacksonville pretty handily in week three, and then they lost to Seattle 31-23. to So week four was kind of where the things started changing, right? Uh, after a big loss to Seattle, now they play San Francisco in week five, sorry, and they beat San Francisco 43-17. to And how did they do that? So for starters, Ryan Fitzpatrick was fantastic in that game. He was spraying the ball all over the field, finding his receivers. Preston Williams had a big game. Devontae Parker had a touchdown that game. Um, but at the end of the day, the defense showed up too. Xavier Howard had, a, had an interception. And San Francisco, that game against San Francisco, really got the ball rolling for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, the next big game I want to talk about is the game against the Los Angeles Rams. That's Tua's first start at quarterback. And although he didn't play really well, um, he threw for under 100 yards, he still got the job done, got the win, and the defense really showed up. Right now, the Dolphins are coming off a big loss in Denver last week, 20-13. Um, to 13. But before then, they had won five in a row, and they had won six of their last seven. Right now, they've won six of their last eight, and they play New York this week. Uh, which is definitely a very winnable game. Even, in, even though it's in New York, I think the Dolphins should win that game. However, let's talk about what allowed them to go on that five-game win streak. For starters, they were playing great complementary football. They were doing it at all three aspects of, of the game, right? They were playing really good offense, although not a super high-powered offense. They were getting the job done there. They were running the football okay. They were throwing the football pretty well. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick against the – the San Francisco 49ers and the Jets was playing well. And then when Tua came in, he didn't turn the ball over. Tua right now is at six touchdowns and no interceptions. He does have a fumble um, on his first NFL drive. Aaron Donald caused that. But at the end of the day, Tua has been really good at not turning the ball over. And that's one of the reasons that we've seen the Dolphins uh, beat good teams like the Rams, the Cardinals, and even the Chargers, who are a very good football team, even though uh, they have a losing record. Now, though, let's go to the standouts and who has been playing some Awesome football. Let's start with Emmanuel Ogba, who's been an absolutely terrific free agent finding uh, from the Miami Dolphins staff and Chris Greer. If you look at his stats for a second, you'll understand how just fantastic they are. Uh, currently, he has eight sacks, which leads the Dolphins. Plus, he's got five pass deflections, too. Um, he's been really fantastic at getting his hands on footballs, and that's a big thing. I mean, he's getting pressure, and he's also caused a few uh, 
fumbles too. Him and Shaq Lawson have done a really good job. It's mostly been Emmanuel Ogba, but Shaq Lawson too has done a fantastic job. So it looks like the Dolphins have found some solid edge rushers. Ogba has been absolutely fantastic. He's been one of the stars of that defense, and he's been one of the reasons that the Dolphins have had really a lot of success um, early on in this football season. Also, another standout is Xavier Howard. But I also want to give a, a shout out to Byron Jones too. Although Byron Jones has struggled a little bit um, so far, he didn't play too well in that Cardinals game. Um, nor did Xavier Howard, but Xavier Howard and Byron Jones are looking really solid. I mean, they are stopping offenses, and they're making offenses really target Nick Needham, who has been okay. He's been a little bit up and down. But Xavier Howard and Byron Jones overall combined look very, very good. Let's go with Xavier Howard for a second. He, earlier in the season, had a streak of four games with interceptions. Um, in each right now, he's up to six interceptions. And uh, when he has an interception, the Dolphins normally do pretty well. He's had six interceptions, and they're four and two in those games. Uh, so when Xavier Howard gets an interception, it's likely that the Dolphins will win. He did get one in Denver last week, didn't end up winning that game. But Xavier Howard right now, when he's healthy, he's a top 10 corner in the NFL. He just is. He's a ball hawking guy, um, and he's just a solid overall corner. And he's a, the reason that this Dolphins secondary has been really solid. I mean, him and Ogba on the defense have been absolutely awesome. But another really important guy to the secondary has been Bobby McCain, um, who is one of the better ranked uh, safeties by PFF. This is actually a second year playing safety so far. Um, he was originally a corner out of Memphis. I believe he was a former fifth round pick, but he has 35 total tackles this year, but perhaps more importantly, he's got four pass deflections and interception. He's been all over the field. Um, and just as a difference maker, he causes quarterbacks to really think about where they're throwing the ball to um, and he's been one of the standouts there too I think he had a, a PFF grade of around 75 um, don't quote me on that but I know it was pretty high um, for what I've seen from him in the past and he's definitely one of the big improvers um, on this Dolphins defense also Jason Sanders under the radar uh, guy here kicker for the Dolphins um, he now holds the Miami Dolphins record a franchise record for consecutive kicks in a row I believe he got to 22 before missing one um, a few weeks ago, but Jason Sanders has been lock solid. He's really established himself as one of the better kickers in the NFL, and he's only missed one kick all season. So really solid kicker for the Dolphins, and he's really shown why he, he should be one of the better kickers and perspective is one of the better kickers in, in the NFL. But at the end of the day, I mean, he's he's one of the reasons why the Dolphins have won a lot of football games, um, just of his his kicking and his ability to just make important field goals. Another standout for uh, for the Dolphins defense, um, and more of the, on, honestly, the Dolphins special teams, has been Andrew Van Ginkle. This guy is the soul of the Dolphins defense. He has been super opportunistic and super aggressive on the football. Um, he had a, a fumble return for a touchdown earlier this season um, against the Rams. Um, Emmanuel Agba strip sack. Van Gingle took it back like 80 yards for a touchdown. But also he had a massive fumble forced against uh, Denver last weekend against Melvin Gordon, uh, a big goal line stop. And it ended up giving the Dolphins the opportunity to go score a touchdown. Ryan Dispatch ended up throwing an interception. But at the end of the day, Van Gingle has been really, really good. Um, good guy getting to the football. He's just high energy, high work rate guy. And I really like what I'm seeing from him so far this season. And then finally, I just want to talk about Brian Flores and Josh Boyer. Um, and their defensive play calling as standouts. They have been awesome dialing up the defense. Last week was a little bit questionable. Really couldn't stop the run. Um, that was something that was really big last week. Uh, but overall, Brian Flores and Josh Boyer have been really creative, going to cover zero a lot, relying on their main coverage uh, with guys like Xavier Howard, Byron Jones, Nick Needham um, as corners. Um, and then they're blitzing a lot too. They're deciding to get to the quarterback, putting pressure on the quarterback, and really confusing the quarterback with tons of different looks. They'll have eight guys lined up at the line of scrimmage at times, especially on third downs. It's one of their go-to plays there. Um, and sometimes they'll rush six. Sometimes they'll rush seven. Sometimes they'll rush all eight. But at the end of the day, they're really doing a fantastic job just diagnosing offenses, really understanding what offenses want to do, and just putting the pressure on quarterback. So that's good job with them. Now let's go to the up and downs, right? Players that have played – okay, but they've had some ups and downs. So I want to start with Tua here. Tua looked fantastic against the Cardinals, but last week in Denver and his first game against the Rams, he threw for under 100 yards. The big thing that he has done really well is not turn the ball over. Six touchdowns, no interceptions. He has looked really good. Um, he's been able to get outside the pocket, make throws on the run, but Shane Gailey needs to trust Tua to go outside of the pocket and make throws on the run. Something he needs to work on a little bit more is reading defense a little quicker and making the right throw quicker too. Something that he's doing um, is holding onto the football too much and that's allowing for pressure and the offensive line to just crumble. So at the end of the day, I think two is doing a good job, but at the end of the day, I think that especially without Preston Williams, um, he's on IR right now. It's going to be a little bit harder for Tua to really uh, 
push this offense forward. Right now they're in the bottom half of the league in offensive efficiency, in offensive stats, all that. But I think Tua, he has that great feel for the game, um, but he just needs to be a little bit more consistent. And we need to see more of what we saw against uh, the Cardinals uh, out of Tua than rather what we've been seeing um, against the Broncos or the Rams. So we just need a little bit more consistency from him. It's also early in his career. He's four or five games in at this point. And it'll be interesting to see what he does against the Jets next week, against the defense that's been really struggling all year, and the defense that he can definitely take advantage of. Also, another up-and-down player has been Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker last year was fantastic for the Miami Dolphins, um, but this year he has not been as great. Yes, that's part of the reason. I mean, Ryan Fitzpatrick was really big with um, Devontae Parker, and now it's Tua at quarterback, who has a different little bit of a different feel for the game. He's liking Jakeem Grant a lot, but he still likes Devontae Parker. Don't get me wrong. With so the thing is with Devontae Parker so far, he's got 44 catches, 523 yards and four touchdowns. And that's not really what he did last year. He was up over a thousand yards last year. I um, mean, he's not really on pace to do that this year, but he's still been a solid guy. He's been a big touchdown guy. He's had a few big touchdowns in the past few weeks. I mean, he had a great touchdown uh, last week against the Broncos. Great throw by two of their, um, that's looking like his specialty throw there too. He's done that a few times. He did that against uh, the Cardinals with Matt Collins, that kind of like that over the shoulder fade route almost. Um, but Parker, he's been there for the season. He's still a wide receiver one. He's still showing that he should be paid like a wide receiver one. But he, he's been a little bit lost at times. He's, he's been lost into games, um, a, f- a few games. Um, so really just more consistency. And for Devontae Parker to show up, I think that'd be pretty big for the Dolphins offense. The last up and down thing I want to talk about is the O-line. This is a young offensive line. You got to be honest here. With Austin Jackson at left tackle, um, and then at right tackle, you've got Robert Hunt or Jesse Davis, and then you've got Solomon Kinley at right guard, um, and then Ted Karras and, and Eric Flowers. This is a young offensive line. Three um, rookies sometimes. Sometimes it's two rookies. Um, but with Jesse Davis on the COVID list, you're going to need Robert Hunt to step up. And the thing with them is early in the season, they were not giving up sacks, but that was because Ryan Fitzpatrick was throwing the ball up pretty quickly. With Tua hanging onto the ball a little bit more, uh, this Dolphins offensive line really needs to step up. They've got, they've got to play better. Austin Jackson has been up and down. He's had some good games, had some bad games. He hasn't given up too many big sacks, but he's had a few bad uh, holding calls um, or, or just some bad penalties in general. Solomon Kinley, same with him. He hasn't really given up that many sacks, nor has uh, Jesse Davis or Robert Hunt. We, as, as, as an offensive line, we really haven't given up that many sacks. I mean, the Dolphins did give up six sacks last week against the Broncos, um, but overall they've been solid. They have had up and down games, right? But the, one of the standouts that I think has been really, really solid is actually left guard Eric Flowers. He's not been incredible, right? I'm not going to say he's been incredible, but I'm going to say he's been the most consistent player on that offensive line. Um, he's a real big team first guy. He always uh, helps Tua up or helps uh, whoever uh, is running the football up. Um, he's always the first guy to help his teammate up. So just look at that when you're watching some Dolphins games. Look at watch Eric Flowers. He's been solid on that offensive line. And I think that's a good job, a good free agent move by the Dolphins to bring in him. I mean, he's not been a, an above average left guard so far this year, I'd say. Um, but I think he's been average, and honestly, for the Dolphins and their offensive line inconsistencies over the past few years, I think that's really good. Obviously, there's some talent on that offensive line with Austin Jackson and Robert Hunt and Solomon Kinley, and they have shown a lot of promise, but they just need to be better from game to game. They need to be more consistent from game to game. And that consistency is something that we'll see over time. Now, though, let's go to the low points of this uh, Miami Dolphins team. So run defense and the run game are two things that the Dolphins just have not been able to get going. Last week in Denver, the Dolphins' run defense was horrendous. They could not stop the run to save their life. And that's kind of surprising, especially with some of the players they have, um, especially in the linebacking core and guys like Kyle Van Noy, who's also been a really good standout player too. Um, they've got Kyle Van Noy, Jerome Baker, Kamu Grugier Hill. Um, but also we really just saw last week that Christian Wogans being out um, due to COVID was a big loss for them. Right? He's one of the better run stuffers on this defense um, in Miami, and his absence was huge. So at the end of the day, the run defense is something that has not really been able to be fixed the entire season. I mean, Melvin Gordon ran through the Dolphins defense all the last week, and it's not the first running back that's been able to have a lot of success. So at the end of the day, the run defense is something that needs to really be shored up. Um, It's something that needs to be fixed um, in the offseason. But a guy who's played pretty well during this time is Raekwon Davis. He looked good last week stopping the run. He was one of the uh, only high points of the Dolphins' loss last weekend. Also, on the offensive side of the football, the run game just hasn't been hasn't been there. I mean, the Dolphins have Ahmed right now in the running game with Gaskin out uh, with injury. They've got Matt Breida. Obviously, Jordan Howard didn't work out. So the run game's been a little bit inconsistent. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, Ahmed has, has, has done a solid job. Breida's a good change of pace back. And when Gaskin gets back, I think they'll have a little bit more consistency. But at the end of the day, they're still going to need to look for a running back in the offseason, in free agency, um, maybe in the draft to really sure up that run game. 
And finally, offensive consistency is something that the Dolphins have really lacked all year. Some games Tua looks good, some games Tua looks bad, but Shane Gailey needs to understand that if you get two out of the pocket, you use his mobility, you find the big targets in Mike Kosicki and Jerome Smythe and Adam Shaheen, who have all played really well um, so far this season at the tight end position. The tight end position has been something of, of real value for the Dolphins this year. Uh, they've been really good, in the, in, especially in the red zone, finding the, uh, the big tight ends. Uh, so watch for the tight ends. I think that's something that Chang Daly can really build on, but really just consistent offensive play uh, from game to game, week to week, um, drive to drive is something that the Dolphins really need to build on. Uh, they can't be relying on their defense to score points. So at the end of the day, um, I mean, if you look at the rest of the schedule, they've got the Jets and Cincinnati in the next two weeks, which they both have to win. They have to win those games if they have a shot at the playoffs because then they play Kansas City and then they have a tough game against New England, divisional game. Uh, tough game against Las Vegas, and then they have a tough game against Buffalo, too, to round up the season. So I don't know how many more wins they have in the bag. I think there's probably three uh, wins there to put them at nine and seven, maybe. And then they'll probably have to beat either Kansas City or Las Vegas or Buffalo, who are all playoff teams there, to get to 10 and six, which I think if they're 10 and six, they probably have a good shot at the playoffs. But at the end of the day, the Dolphins are way ahead of their rebuild. Um, they're way ahead of uh, where they need to be uh, or where we thought they would be coming into the season, maybe even at the end of the last season. Um, looking at the draft. So at the end of the day, Dolphins have done a really good job to start this year. Disappointing loss in Denver last weekend, but at the end of the day, they've got a lot of good things going for them. And if they can keep up the defensive effort um, and keep up that solid play on the defensive side of the football, and then they can get a little bit more help on the offensive side of the football with their play calling, um, as well as just with some a little bit more consistency. This team is a playoff team. I mean, they're, they're playing some solid football and they were, they, they had a big five game win streak um, and they were playing good co complimentary football. Also, Jakeem Grant had a uh, a touchdown return early in that um, five-game win streak. So they can play complementary football all three phases of the game and dominate all three phases of the game. And I think this Miami Dolphins team is a playoff team. So watch out for the Miami Dolphins for the rest of the season um, and get excited, Vince fans. What do you think of my analysis? Do you agree or do you disagree? Why or why not? Leave your comments in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Also, if you're new around here, please drop a like and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. And at the end of the day, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, see ya.